What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nonsense Brewery. This is uh, episode number, I don't know, let's call it 27. Uh, <laughs> my name's Jerome. Uh, I will be one of your hosts. You know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to be your main host today because I'm the one in Whoa. I'm sipping on a Allagash White. Can you see that? My lighting's kind of trash. Yeah, the lighting's kind of bad, but it looks good. What Allagash it? White. It's nice, man. It's a, a Belgian-style wheat beer with coriander and orange peel. Hmm. Sounds like Blue Moon. Mm-hmm. Didn't yeah. you also is, have another summer beer or last time? Uh, last time I had like a some sort of blackberry raspberry sour. I think. Okay. Um. Someone, someone, go back and check the tapes. Caleb Peck, go back last week. Check the tapes for us. What is? <laughs> um. I'm gonna pass it on to uh my guy Alex Kadiri. What's, What's on, up? Man? Oh, thank you. What a surprise! Thanks for having me again. <laughs> uh hey, you're welcome boy- I, I love having my guests here today <laughs> yeah boy february continues on into the third week for me i am on oh, milwaukee's best what dude that wasn't yeah. even on our list of top tens well i like to surprise what can i say oh god damn dude that slurp that, that has to be therapy. like the worst <laughs> one it has to be the worst one is that mm-hmm. that even sure. hurt I've never even heard of that one. I've got the sun um, in his eyes, sitting on his porch. <laughs> Looks like it. It's good. It's good. You it's good. See, but let me you l- can't l- see l- <laughs> let me introduce the next guy on our podcast. You know him. You love him. He supports local farmers. It's my boy Jay. My boy Josh, the man, the man with the plan. Josh Belinsky, what you got? I, I'm sorry. Yeah. By the, oh, oh, the the local king of Boone County. Boone County. Of Boone from, County. From, from Boone County. Is that fair? I don't Boone. think no. It's Watauga County, Boone, North Carolina. Ah, Jesus. That's You're the so city. Close. Name. You're so close. Yeah, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a week to practice. I'm gonna let you try again, Alex. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's fair. That's no, fair. Fine. Hey everybody. I'm I'm sitting in my house. I'm drinking Miller Light. That's a that's a frat boy beer right there. Mm, not really. Miller Light. Miller, you don't think Miller is? Yeah, I listened to the episode last week, and you, y'all put that on the list. But too That's many, too many, uh, one. too many dads drink Miller Lite for it to be a frat beer. Okay, that's, I mean, that's you can't that's, just call every assessment. There's a lot of frat dads beer there. A frat beer. Yeah, that's true. I got. They can't have it. It's mine. Miller's mine. <laughs> just kidding. I don't. I don't care. Call it what you want. I don't. I wouldn't consider it. I would. I think it's better. It's too good tasting to be a frat boy beer. He took, it per- he took it personally. I think this is what what he's saying. No, is, I mean, no. is all is all Miller's domestic great beer. Is all, are all domestic beers like frat boy beers? Is no, that that's that, that's a good point. That's a good point because all of the domestics, all all of the beers listed, well, four of them were domestic. Exactly. No, like, okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the requirements are must be domestic, must come in a can, uh, so you can shotgun it, and Bottle. well, okay, but Miller also sells uh, them in cans. Yeah, that's true. So, but you're right. I can imagine you as a middle-aged dad at like a cookout right now. What about someone who's drinking Mil- Milwaukee's best ice? Yeah, that I'm just like, this person needs to go to a mental institution. I probably do. Anyway, right, let's introduce talk. our got, last guest. I got real tired <laughs> of y'all talking about beer last week. I almost quit listening. <laughs> Damn. I'm talking about, I'm talking this about is beer the, for like 20 minutes. It's the nonsense brewery, man. It's the first yeah. time ever we've actually talked about beer <laughs> for an extended period of time. It is true. It is All true. right, last host. Yeah, last host. Um, hey, everyone. And Cisto here. I've got classic Bud Light. Kept it simple. We uh, actually like bought like, um, I forget the size, uh, but I think it was like an 18 pack. And then we were um, kind of hanging out uh, last Thursday. These are some of the leftovers. So I'm working on this. Nice. It would take That's Jerome it. a month and a half to drink that. That's true. Dude, I've actually significantly my increased brother, so. my, uh, my beer intake since I've moved to North Carolina. I probably drink a minimum of, uh, you know, four pints a week. Four That's pints? Pretty good for me. That's pretty good for me. That's pretty good for me. Just saying. Just saying. I don't really speak in those uh, terms. The, the pints, well, you know, you know this, this is the pint size. This is the okay. pint yeah. size. And CISO's from Columbia. He's, everything's leaders. 
I'll just, oh, I'll just, bad. Bad. I'll just do, Three. I'll just, I'll just think of the shots of the aguardiente. You know what? I should buy some of that and, and send some said. for you guys. It's like, <laughs> a, it's, it's like, um, it's like, a arder is like, uh, to burn. And so it's like burning water. Um, mm. and so, it like but fireball? it's not, yeah. I mean, it doesn't taste like fireball, but it's like, yes, yeah, so like it's a liquor and it just does not okay. taste. Some people love it, but it's like the, the it'll hit you. So okay. I'll have to uh, I'll have to import some. Can I? Can I? Uh, you know, can I, under under the table, kind of thing. Dang. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll just dang or ship it from Miami Alex. or something. I want to talk about what like what what interests you, Josh? What 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 do you want to talk about this week? No, um, fuck Josh. Cyberpunk. No. Oh my god. What did he say? <laughs> oh, cyberpunk. cyberpunk. Nah, you're not even no, gaming no, this no, time. No. I think We're Alex. About well, at the core of this, it's Alex I wants to know what's going Xbox, on. But Jerome will be mad at me, so I guess I can't. I want to know. I want to know. Socks? No, <clears throat> I want to have. I want to. I want to like. I want to make Josh happy this week. We made. You, we made us happy. About? Yeah. <laughs> how did I make? How did I make you? Bro, happy? what the fuck what did, did you just say? What yeah. do you mean? I want to make. I want to make Josh happy this week. It, it yeah. seems like he hasn't been happy this last few weeks. Yeah, we've been talking about I'm, topics that. I'm sad. I'm lonely. I'm upset, you know. This is I have been, I what kind of podcast has this turned into? I feel like I've been getting on to Alex. I feel like I've been getting on to you a lot because um, you're uh, maybe uh, I don't know superfluous investing and um, it's true. Oh, yeah. it's true. your your tax tax return philosophies. It's true, but it's true. We just we're just that we're we're very. Uh, I think um, my we, Mal and I did um, premarital counseling. And there's always a spender and a saver. And I think Alex is a spender and I'm a saver. And so that's why our marriage is uh, a little rocky right now. Uh, I feel like I just let you down. Wait, wait, wait. Who, <laughs> whose marriage? As in like your He's marriage about, to Alex? Yes. yes. My and Alex's marriage. The bro okay, marriage. I'm following. The bro marriage. Our friendship marriage. What? Okay. No, but, let's, let's continue with that train of thought. So Josh, you think you're a saver. You think Alex is a spender. What do you think yeah. in CISO is and what do you think I am? And CISO is a spender, and you're a spender. You're all spenders. Me, me, Max. Dan. <laughs> Look at the shoe Dan, collection. Me and Dan are savers. No, and Dan's maybe, just. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. That's fair. Dan's Dan's a cheapo. He's a cheapy peepee. He's a cheapo. A cheapy peepee. He's he's El cheapo. Dan drives for Uber Eats for fun when he has a full time like. I know he's got a full time job and he's <laughs> driving Uber Eats. What the hell? Yeah, that, so that, that's what that that you need to know about Dan. That's wild to me. But he's he's the he's a Warren Buffett of our generation. What? That was How? insane to listen to that. Of, that, that, that. I was laughing out loud listening to Daniel talk about Uber Eats last week. I was like, this is this idiot. <laughs> I know. He made thirty five dollars in two hours, and he was. It so was good hyped. content. It was really good content. But I think yeah. you know, if if anybody's like listening and they're thinking this guy just studied you know doubly and in and he's like working and all that and he decides to uber eat it's, it's i don't know it's an interesting train of thought right just yeah I'm it's good roast that. material though because we're what were we talking about this week we were saying like you got some i think dan was like i feel like i'm not a real engineer and i was like yeah you work in sales and you're <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> it's like oh, me and alex man. make things work <laughs> it's true. we should he should really make a video of that, like him driving over eats. That'd be yeah. so funny. That'd, that'd, be, so be, funny. that'd be a good video. That'd be a solid video. Yeah. But you know I have crazy? a rant today, guys. I have a rant today. Oh, shit. I went to the DMV <laughs> because I had to get my, my freaking registrations expired or whatever, right? Um, Are they still doing COVID and so, stuff? Uh, yeah, in the sense of you go to the door, you check in, and then you just wait in your car until they call your number. Um, <laughs> but... So I went out and I had to get my, like, I had to get a North Carolina license plate and then I had to get my registration done. So I walk up and I'm like, I check in and I asked the guy, how long is this going to take? And he was like, oh, it'll probably be about 30 minutes or so. Two hours later, they call me in, right? So I go in and I have all my paperwork in order. I give the lady all my shit. Didn't realize in North Carolina, you have to pay property tax on your car don't have to do that in Tennessee. And yep. so today I paid $650 to yep. register my car and get a license plate in the state of North Carolina. It's awful. Why didn't you just keep your Tennessee uh, because your parents don't live, you don't have a full-time address Yeah, here. no one, well, my sister lives there, but like it's never been associated with my car. You know, that address hasn't. Um, yeah. 
And so, and then I also found out that, so yearly you have to pay that property tax in order to register your car, right? You also have to get your car tested, like emissions testing. Yep. Yep. I'm like, oh do my do that god. In oh, you do? I don't. Yeah. I've never done that. No, I've never done that in my life. In Nashville, you do. Oh, yeah, in the okay. city of Nashville, you do. You don't have to. It's like I don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I can still drive a 2005 Chevrolet that, Trailblazer. Dude, Tennessee is is so cheap to live in if you're in a certain area. Like it I is know. very cheap. I'm so sad. Kingsport. Kingsport, a uh, gallon of milk is like two dollars. And how much um, is gas? How much is gas? That's bank. what I know. Well, it's up right now, but it's up everywhere. Uh, it's like two uh with your oh well, I get it from Kroger and you get the Kroger points, so it's like two twenty. I don't know. It, it cracks me yeah. up. Whenever whenever I was roommates with Josh in Kentucky in Bowling Green, he he would he I don't know, he would look at the like the the prices for a gallon of milk and eggs. He's gone. He left. I'm sorry. I'm he, he can still hear. He can still hear. He can still hear. <laughs> I got But but he'd be like, it's so cheap to live here in Kentucky because like it was what seven, 80 cents for like a pack, like a carton of eggs. And a gallon, well, of, milk, like, a gallon of milk in Bowling Green, the summer of 2017 was a dollar. Yeah. That blows my mind. It was nuts. Like, uh, it was absolutely eggs, nuts. How much is it now, 60, Alex? Sixty-two it's, it's, cents. It's it's a dollar seventy. Wow. Yeah. Dude, also, probably... so I don't really understand how like food staples work because I know a gallon of milk here is, I don't know, definitely more than a dollar. But um, I can go to my closest Harris Teeter, which is owned by Kroger, right? And I can get 30 eggs, three zero for one dollar mm-hmm. for 99 yeah. cents. And sometimes it's on sale for like 79 cents. And well, it's about the it gets me rock hard. Also. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's about how close you are to the chickens, you know. It's about it's about it's about uh, chicken chicken vagina to store distance. That's the metric you gotta from, consider. From vagina to table. Okay. Vagina okay. to table metric. Yeah. Dude, they should start putting that like out in restaurants, you know, <laughs> instead of form the table. I want that is what, hilarious. what is the time to, from vagina fun, to table? Fun, fun fact. They have cloacas, not vagina. That's the fuzzy. We got all the fuzzy pets. Jerome, put Tuck hey, on the gas. what up, Doc? I can't. He's he's down below me. He he likes Little to mucker. sleep at my feet. No judgment, but Jerome's dog is gay. There's. I have a photo we'll that Josh sent me. Josh uh, pet tapped for me one time, and mm-hmm. uh, I have this photo times. of Josh, it like using my bathroom with the door wide open and Tuck just staring at him. Yeah. <laughs> it was the the strangest experience of my life. And he just, he just backs it up on you, you know? If you're sitting anywhere, he's, like, putting his ass on you. That's true. He does do that. He likes to just, like, throw his weight around. And if you roll over and you, and you pet his tummy, the red rocket comes out. Oh, no. Yeah, it's bad. All right, can we, can we move on? I might, cut, I might cut all this. I might cut we're all talking this. A, we're talking about a lot of animal genitalia. We got to get we're – off, we're off topic. We got to get back – I don't, no, I, topic, I don't even know like what topic we were on. You know, I do we were talking about North Carolina. Uh, 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 North Carolina. Hold up. I want to talk about Harris about North... Oh my God. Harris Theater. What about it? Objectively, the best grocery store I've ever been to. Axe, Harris... dude. It's so yeah. awesome. I love that place. <laughs> yeah, sure. What? I Publix. love Harris Pub Theater, subs. man. Pub subs. I'm telling you, Alex. Alex, have you been to Harris no, Theater? No, Pub- Publix is too expensive. What does that right. have to do with being the best? Like, like the well, best prices is, the best. is, is no, 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 no prices see, listen, is part of like, part of being the best. I still have a Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, okay, I can understand that because that's like I don't know. I, I never we didn't have Piggly Wiggly growing up. You like uh, NC so you like Publix for adult reasons. You like it for the selection they have. You like it for the pricing. You think it's fair? Some chicken um, tenders. You think yeah. it's just all I can around. Always pick up some chicken quality. tenders, bro. It's it's Harris not super Theater. crowded like a Walmart is because things are expensive, so people not as many people go there. You're so I'm, not saying, I'm not saying Publix is a bad supermarket. I I really enjoy Publix because they got no, I think, shit I think Publix is I think Publix is better than Food City. I think it's better than uh, Ingles. I think it's better than what's the other one? I'm blanking. Whole Foods, Walmart, Whole Foods. Better. Well, that's not really a gas station. No, I like Whole Foods. I think Whole Foods is good. Listen, here's the point I'm making. Yeah. Harris Teeter, if you're 10 years old, there's absolutely no competition. That is the that is the best. Um, that is the best grocery store. You got to They got yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. Why? They got free samples all over the place. They used to I've have never seen a free sample like Sam's. Sounds like Sam's. 
I've never seen a free sample. Oh, you, maybe you got the wrong hair seeder. They got free samples everywhere. And they got um, little mini carts that you can That's push true. around like alongside your mom. And that is the most fun shit I ever did as 10 year old. <laughs> that was okay, like, all right. one of my best all memories right. ever. But did your did your dad ever like say, hey, can you push the cart? And then he would still drive the front of the cart while you're going around the whole grocery store? Oh, yeah. Hondo P. Not I'm, Harris I can, you should trust me. I'm yeah, a trustable man. guy. Yeah, but how old my, are you? How old are you? My brother uh, old enough. Ran, my brother ran a cart into an old lady when he was really really young. Yeah, well, at like a that's why you can't trust them, man. That's why you can't trust so you, kids. You cannot trust children. Yeah, you can't. Hundred percent. So and then wrong. the old lady so, will get mad at you, like the parent. Oh yeah, she was like, she was so mad at my mom. And I'd be like, "Yo, listen, lady, it wasn't my fault. The kid ran the cart into you. Yell at the kid. That's what I would <laughs> yeah, say. Please, you can hit him. That's what my mom yeah. would probably say." Like, go ahead. We just had a little variety hour of uh, taxes, uh, I guess, supply pricing of uh, common goods. We uh, can talk about, we should talk about grocery stores. tax philosophy and how wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That could be a little no, bit interesting. Uh, okay, go ahead. Alex, explain to us how you think taxes work. How do taxes work? <laughs> the government will tax you on a flat rate on your bracket. And then when you go between brackets, you get a different return based off how it works. And that's I how really taxes hope, work. I really hope you're being facetious because, you know, that was just wrong. That's not what? how taxes work. That's not that's how taxes, how taxes work. work. Based off your income, you're putting in I really, bracket. I really can't tell if you're being serious or not. I got a question for, yeah. for everyone. Have you all seen Ron Swanson explain taxes on uh, Rec's and Par- Parks and Rec? Parks and Rec? Rec. No. I'm okay. sure at one point I have. I don't remember. He pretty much grabs a, a so there there's a I don't know Leslie somebody's daughter is in there for the work day she's like sitting at some table and she has to write some paper on taxes basically and Ron, uh, Ron yeah, he, radicalizes her he walks over to her and says like uh, she, he asks her like oh hey how's it going like how, how's the day and she's like oh I gotta write this paper on taxes and he's like oh he he gets all you know he gets all excited Worked up. And, mm-hmm. and he says some like crazy, like adult, like level language of analogy of like what government's like. So he had to break it down into something a child could understand. I forgot the analogy. It had something to do with like, uh, uh, like a teat or whatever, but like he took her lunch and then kind of like ate her lunch to show oh, taxes, yeah, yeah, yeah. to show yeah. taxes. So yeah, that's how you explain how taxes work. Now, does well, that's tax- like the overarching concept, yeah, right? Like yeah, you right. have one sandwich, the government eats 25% of your sandwich. Yeah. So it can run. That's like the overarching concept yeah. of taxes. The, but it, I think Alex's understanding is just in What do you mean? So he's the first he's thing, like, off. You know the, the type of people Alex that are like, oh, I don't want to get a promotion because I'll be in a higher tax bracket no, and then I'll bring home dumb. less money. Yeah, that's Dude, how you that's explain not what taxes. I'm saying. That's, that's not how what you I'm explained saying. it. No, I'm saying that you get paid, you get put in a tax bracket off your income and then they'll tax you up until you go into the next bracket. That makes that's sense. Not how that works. Uh, wait, what yes, do you mean? You said, yeah. you, said it, you said it was a flat rate. That's not how it I was works. joking. Okay. okay. Yeah, he was joking. Joking. Right. Bro, I know how taxes work. You want it to be as close to zero as possible, but I want to make myself feel good about me getting a good tax return. No, okay, That's okay, why okay, I'm bullshitting all right. you guys. All right. All right. So you're, the first thing, getting, the first thing that happened now. The first thing that happened is Alex um, had some capital losses this year that he's going to yep. claim as a tax yep. break. And he was what like, are capital losses, listen, Josh? That's when you make poor investments and you lose money and you get a tax break for that money that gets that gets uh the amount that you lose gets taken off of your um your eligible income for ta- to be taxed so okay. if you lose five hundred dollars um and you make uh you know less than seventy five thousand dollars a year your effective tax rate is probably twenty percent so you basically get five hundred dollars off your eligible income and you get a hundred dollar ta- like of that back now what Alex said was that he was going to get all five hundred dollars of that back. <laughs> that is in which fact is the, what he said. Which is the first. That thing is that not was what I said. That, that is, is what, what you said. said. Why are you lying? Why are you lying? I, lost, I said I lost five hundred dollars and I'll get some of it back. 
But he said, that doesn't matter. I'm getting it back anyways. You might as well right. lose five hundred. Right. Yeah. You were like, it doesn't that. matter that I lost I 500 that. because I'm going to get it back in my taxes. And we were like, yeah. no, you don't get all of that back. So then, so then, okay, all right. So first of all, that was wrong. But yeah, then he was like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get like a $3,000 refund anyways. That's going to pay for this. And I was like, that's already your money. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Which is nah, what I but Which is we're hence the term well, refund. Well, well, yeah, I was like, well, that's why you should have just said, hence the term refund. That's what it, literally it's your own money. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, I'm not if, getting that much money if you, back. If you brag about getting a three thousand dollar refund, you're bragging basically. You're saying, hey, I'm, I'm really sucker. bad with money. <laughs> I gave the government three thousand dollars at zero percent interest for one year. That's what you're saying. Right. <laughs> it's true. But they but could take your you're, money anyway. Yeah. And there, I know, I know, um, uh, I have a coworker who's getting like eighty five hundred dollars, and she's like a single mom, and she has three kids, and I don't, oh, I don't know, live, I'm sure she lives paycheck to paycheck, but it's yeah, she like she doesn't claim any dependents, so she just like pays all the taxes and gets it all back. Wow. And that, but it's just very dumb. But I can't. Yeah. Why would you? Why we? Well, okay, I, that's like a strategy, right? Like a lot of people say to put zero on your W-4 or whatever. And then, you know, t- during tax season, you'll get the most amount of money back. You'll get a really large refund. But is that really beneficial? No, it's absolutely not. It's the dumbest thing you can do. Especially Why, Josh? Like, Tell us. Because, well, I, it's, I already explained it. If you get an $8,500 refund, it means you gave the government $8,500 loan at 0% interest for one year. And if, since you have three kids, I mean, Kids are kids are gold mine. Like they're they're a huge tax break. The government gives you a lot of a lot of breaks on having children. You know, preparing the next generation or whatever. Um, but the point of that is, I mean, say your car breaks down, it'd be nice to have a liquid extra eighty five hundred dollars laying around to be able to fix your car. So what should have another, this person done instead of should have putting zero on their W four? Claim three dependents and kept that money all year and put it in either a savings account or some kind of investment account where they're the ones that get to make money off of it and not the government. Or if you really want to give your money to the government, buy some government bonds. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. That's what they say. Yes, that's the concept. Hyperinflation hits, and then it's not worth anything. (laughs) Until everything's worth nothing. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that was a little, that was interesting. I, um, that's a, yeah, uh, personal, a ta- tax lesson from corner. Josh. Yeah, but personal uh, finance corner. But uh, you know, people got to learn for themselves. Obviously, we're just we're just chatting here. No, dude, that's the crazy thing. Is like, it pro- like things like taxes and going back like to my day to day, like registering. Stuff, yeah, like registering your car. You know, knowing if you have to get emissions tested, and you know how to go to the DMV and get your license. That's like shit that everyone has to do no matter what, but no one ever teaches you that in high school. You know what we I mean? Need to build did you an guys, app for this. did you guys learn about taxes in high school? Mm, not, like really not school. about how they work? Not in school. Not enough. Or was it, yeah. was it just like your parents explained it to you when you got your first job or for friends or whatever, yourself yeah. or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Other people. It's, I think that's the most frustrating thing. And it's like, that's what I eventually aspire to do is to teach people like about finances, like regular day. Everyone has to deal with this shit finances because I feel like so many people think it's so confusing and it's not, it doesn't have to be just, no one tells you about it, you know? Yeah. Anyway. So that, yep. Good point. Hey, Jerome. Hey, uh, good point. Thanks, good man. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's I'm full of them up here. That's that MBA, you know, can we, can we talk about that ending after the break? That yeah, yeah. Do you want to take a break? We can take a break. Let's take a break. What Darius, is? Let's go for ahead people and, who are on the podcast, Darius feeling it right now. His eyes are Alex has, been, Alex has been staring at the sun for 20 minutes. Are you stoned, my guy? Ah, uh, No, I can't for work. On the sun. He's, <laughs> high, he's high off the sun. The sun. Yeah, he got too much vitamin D. I got that sunny delight. I mean, uh, Virginia, I, that's, a, that's some uh interesting conversation but uh virginia is like going to be one of the next states to legalize marijuana and that's going to affect a lot of east Midpoint. so i'm really really see. i'm well, about yeah. to work in virginia hmm. yeah see, so does that go. mean does that Fair mean i like... can well okay here's my here's my question <laughs> i 
am currently doing my background check pre-employment screening for my summer internship. Should I start smoking weed? No. And will no. I be okay? Are we on break? No, <laughs> no, no we're, we're not on break. break. Hell yeah, just, I love it. I was just asking. Should, I was just asking. Okay. Cool. Um, you should, cool. should not do that. <laughs> I mean, but you said you never, it was going to be legal. It so. depends on the industry, right? Some industries don't check. Like, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I feel if, like uh, but... in banking, it's pretty regular that they just do cocaine. <laughs> I mean, you said the thing you're not supposed to say. <laughs> Yeah, like how, just how can you be Wolf one of them you're if you're giving away all the man. secrets, man? I'm you're sorry, I'm away. sorry. Listen, if any yeah. potential employers are listening, that was a joke. I'm joking. I'm still, yeah. you know. This is for comedic relief, people. Yeah. Come on. This is, have a, this have is a, a sense of humor. Podcast. This is have a, a sense podcast. of humor. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a break, refill our drinks for those who want to, uh, and we'll come back. Bye. 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 <laughs> welcome back after that break we got a uh a new joiner to the podcast mr daniel sawyer uh the what fella, are you sipping on today the fella in the jetta i'm sipping on some water because i just got done balling how did those yeah, uh, how did those indians treat you did they ball on you hard ball. Dude, they can ball huh? there is a bunch of indian guys from vanderbilt they were they're just balling on us hey man what are you trying to say about indians they're good at yeah. b-ball they're ballers good yeah good i like ballers. the respect i like the are respect. positive uh-huh. stereotypes still and i'm like not allowed positive they stereotypes are. they've always been allowed yeah. dude are positive stereotypes allowed. considered racist yeah Some that's like the question like like Yo. jack like asians are good at math is that racist <laughs> uh, okay, okay, that i one. had a long conversation with savannah about this and, and i asked do stereotypes lead to racism? And she said, no. And I said, yes. Ooh, and this led to a fight. And this led to a fight. No, crazy. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, it was It was actually... <laughs> No, what? no, hundred hundred percent stereotypes do lead to racism. But the question I mean, is, the question are, is, are they positive or are they negative? Question. Well, <laughs> positive racism. Go ahead. Let, let's ask the question. Positive punishment. Does human negative. existence lead to Pain racism? Points. Because at that point, if we're looking for a causal chain of stuff, I mean, let's hmm. you know, if humans didn't exist, there would be no racism. It's like saying like stereotypes are a natural, like, um, predisposition. No, 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 no. They're like a natural results of like humans trying to like figure out the world. And then sometimes we add in these negative and positive. Uh, right. Well, like no, stereo- exactly. that, that, <laughs> stereotypes are based off of like what we observe to be true. Right. Like stereotypes right. are stereotypes because a large portion of, you know, some sort of group of people. Right. Maybe not present themselves in that way, but it some fact is true of that, that person. Like Indians are only doctors lawyers engineers you, you know what i mean that. that's a stereotype yeah. or they own gas stations that's a stereotype no, it, 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 yeah. it's more so it's more so your brain sees a pattern or it tries yeah, to seek a pattern that's a good way to describe every, it and okay. that's a good way to describe it and then what, what is things in boxes exactly yeah. but what if it wasn't your brain but an actual statistical thing you can prove what do you call that if that's not a stereotype what do you call that like a, a statistical like <laughs> behavior that you could tell from a general population, right? Like people who live by the coast go to the beach. If you could prove it like that, it tricky. It's just That's like a, a, it's, a, it's a slippery slope, I, I would say. So for, I guess the question yeah. at hand, though, is: is a positive stereotype still racist? Because so, I would argue, I would argue that if you were to say, you know, all Indians are doctors that i feel like that's a stereotype right yeah there's there's a lot of is that racist ideas being, listen listen there's a lot of a <laughs> lot of good ideas being thrown around and i think we're all making a lot of good points i think we all generally agree that our brains make shortcuts that make our lives easier Do, everybody agrees with that yes you know, if yes. i yes. if i walk past 10 homeless people and seven of them ask me for money then it's for me to generally assume that homeless people are going to ask me for money is you know but th- so that's that's a reasonable reasonable you know, it, it's, it's reasonable. not it's not it's not unreasonable for me to make that correlation and so for me to you know roll up my window and i pass homeless people the bad thing is i think when you don't recognize 
like when you like you know even like the math thing like when you start saying all Asians are good at math you're not you're you got to recognize like people's humanity like some there's 100%. there's some I agree Asian people that are not good at math and but like is, is an Asian person going to be upset that you say the that you vocalize the stereotype all Asians are good at math I think it depends yes. on the person. it depends on I the person so. I think it depends on the person you're right I think it depends yeah. on the person but yeah, people are human, man, tri- everybody are humans here's where it gets tricky i feel like because so josh going back to your homeless person example of if you see seven people ask you for money it's reasonable to assume that homeless people are going to ask you for money what if put yourself in the shoes of a female right you're walking down the street and seven out of ten males cat call you then yeah. now then now um is it reasonable to assume that all males are creeps you know what i mean i i think yeah. in in like the mind in like the female understanding of the world or representation of the world that probably is a reasonable assumption to make right oh no but- that's right jerome i would also i would also argue this before we go any further we would need to have a female perspective on this. that's probably true that's agreed. probably true agreed yeah yeah so we'll just hit the pause button and then we'll pick it up whenever we get the Unless we anybody has a, a female ready. <laughs> I, what I will say, though, before we go <laughs> forward, though, is that, Jerome, you make a, a very good point. Because I can speak for Savannah on this, and I'm, I know you can speak for Barb, and, and Josh can speak for Mal, and Dan can speak for Ch- Charlie. But like, No, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Dude, dude that's fair. saved his ass. He's like, I didn't speak for nobody fair. except... No, 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 that's <laughs> fucking fair. But, like, all of us have... I, I'm, here's what I'm going to say, though. We have all very strong, independent women that we love dearly. Now, Savannah is going to say, look, there's a fucking creep everywhere I go that I will try to work at. You know what I mean? Yeah, but she's not going to say that. She's not going to say every guy is going to be a creep. So it, it, she's recognizing the humanity in everybody, but she wants to have people to recognize the humanity in women. Now, I'm not I, trying to I speak for her. I guess it's more like, uh, you know, the the default answer is, oh, guys are creepy until they prove otherwise. Right. That's fair. I think you You miss out. You miss out on a lot of genuine human interactions when you automatically assume things about people, whether it's positive or negative. 100 percent. 100%. 100%. It, it's crazy, man, because like, that's, that's like the, the first thing they, they teach you in elementary school, right? Uh, it's like, don't judge a book by its cover. But that's like part of being a human. We're fucking judgy as hell. It's, it's the only reason we're still alive. Like, it's the only reason homo sapiens still exists is because we were able Ooh. to like make judgments of people. It's just yeah. like whether or not they were going to kill us or like whether a tiger was going <laughs> to kill us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, Which, it's very human. You just have to learn to. You're only here because your great, 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 great grandfather said, that guy is probably going to kill me. <laughs> I should maybe. kill him first. Maybe. Speaking yeah. of, uh, of humanity, you know, what would you do if you could okay. give up your own life Fair. into someone else's consciousness? I don't know if okay. I explained that right. This was a conversation no, we no, had no, earlier no. in the week. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah. So so we, we typed this up in the group me, and this is related to, you know, uh, it's, it's related to cyberpunk. If someone, if someone uploaded their consciousness into you accidentally or willy-nilly or something just happened, should so we say you have, spoiler? Spoiler? I would say right. I would say it's spoiler. All right. Okay. Spoiler alert for Cyberpunk 2077. Stop it now. Um, but if if someone uploaded their consciousness into your body and your brain is slowly trying to like rewrite your body or kill your body so that the other new consciousness can take over, would you a allow the consciousness to take over like with your own decision so that your body could survive or B let the other consciousness take over your body and you get jousted out into the ether. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly because I feel like in the group view it's much more succinct. So, okay, let me, let me see if I'm understanding correctly. Option one is you let the other consciousness take over. So it's your physical being it's still yes. your body, face, everything, but someone else's consciousness is in your brain and yes. your consciousness no longer exists. Correct. Option B is you still have your consciousness. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I didn't clarify. 
you still have your consciousness in your body, but your body will reject it no matter what, and you will die in six months. Oh, I see. I forgot to clarify that because 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 okay. you, your brain your brain has already made the decision. Hey, this consciousness is not you anymore. We're going to be attacking that this whole time, and you're going to die in six months. So it's either your physical likeness exists on, or you with die. with your with your soul. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I would argue without your soul. I feel like your soul and your consciousness are kind of one and the same. What no, what I mean is your body and your soul, or your body and somebody else's soul. Okay, yeah, that's okay. That, so that's the that's the dichotomy. That, that, that's the two, that's right? The two options. And so then the question is, how do we feel about that? Just to well, yeah. okay, philosophically. Well, Allow Alex, the body start, to continue. Start us off. What it, what would you do? Would you right, die well, in six months, or would you want your physical being to, you know, continue on? So that that's that's a very difficult question, and that's what took me a while to come up with this. But like, I think I I would want to die with my own physical body in six months to say goodbye to everybody because it's mine everything ends at some point so i'd rather do it on my own okay on my own accord if if i chose to be like let's go now i wouldn't be able to say goodbye to everybody you know it's not fair i'm not very good at irish goodbyes josh what about you you <laughs> played this game what is uh what is your choice yeah i feel like i'm almost i mean when you lay it out you kind of like strip it away from all the context of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I, I don't know, I wouldn't make the same decision. Um, Cause in the game, I chose to just give my body away. I was like, yeah, I like this guy. He's cool. He has good, he has good weapons. I want to be him. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so well, let's talk about that though. Cause there's so much more to it. The other person you become friends with, you you learn to live with this person. Like, there's so much more context that that I just. Well, and like you guys, question. um, like they're they're really good friends. Like the two, or they become that way in the end. And so, like, right. he kind of he kind of like memorializes you, and um, you know, kind of like ties up all those loose ends for you. You know, like he didn't have to, obviously, but he he chose to like, you know, like carry carry out all the you know, like tied up you know had a memorial for you and like you know kind of like well no he really didn't did he Alex he kind of but I mean he like let the people know that he needed to know he so was let like me hey, ask you a question then. Not. are Alex and Josh are you guys organ donors yeah I am yeah so okay isn't that kind of similar to being an organ donor? Well, You're no, because they don't they physical don't take terminal terminal brain cancer patients that have six months to live and they say all right, well, right now you can die and you can save four other people. Put it and get on the table. You know, they don't do that. Yeah, but oh, uh, they, they've done like face transplants before, right? So imagine. Have you seen, have you seen Seven uh, with, uh, or Seven Pounds maybe with uh, Will Smith? Will Smith? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have yeah you that movie's a, that's a tearjerker. No. I fried my eyes out. That's the saddest movie I've ever seen. I mean, <laughs> it's a great movie. My, Mallory and I were going to watch it together and she fell asleep at like 10 p.m. And there was like an hour of the movie left and she woke up and I'm just like bawling. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Josh? Like no, but, snotty. So like, here's my point, right? Is like, imagine you die, right? But you're an organ donor and imagine they mm -hmm. find a perfect match and they do a face transplant with your face on someone else's body, right? So now this is the physical representation of you, but with Partially. someone else's, someone else's, mind brain you know soul consciousness whatever i mean are they, they're not going to pass for you like at the you know at the dmv that's they might. fair but it's kind of in a way it's kind of similar right is someone else is kind of living in your physical presence kind of yeah like like face off but alex you're saying that you would prefer to die in six months as you like my my mom is not going to see my face on somebody else and be like, that's Josh. No. But what if, what if the surgery was so perfect that it looked like you, it looked like your no, face. Like in a perfect would, situation. But like like I mean, height and height and weight. And, I, I think it, it's hard. I mean, okay. I, obviously I'm playing devil's advocate because I also would choose the die in six months option, I think. And I'm also an organ donor. So like, obviously I'm just playing devil's advocate here. 
but I don't know. I thought it was just a, an interesting question. Yeah, I think it, it gets at a deeper question of like, what makes you, you? If I like one by one replace all your organs at one po- at what point are you not you anymore? Well, that's your, that's your fucking, yeah. that, that's the ship question, right? That's the replica ship paradox. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it is do a get, paradox. Do, do you know oh, what that is? Ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. All right, all right, all right. Explain it. Or like a car. There is a car or a ship. Basically, you replace one piece of wood or a plank of each ship until eventually you keep all of the original parts and build that ship again. Is the original ship that first ship or is it the replica? Wait, wait. I don't know. I mean, so you're saying you're saying you're replacing like one plank at a time, but then you save all those planks and you rebuild the original ship? Yes. Correct. With new planks, though, you're not using the other ones. No, no, he's saying you use the originals. Over time. He's saying you use the originals. Yeah. What do you mean you use the originals? So, so imagine imagine you have a ship and you replace one plank. So now you have one old plank and one new plank that is in the fully constructed ship. Yes. Right, and the and the new plank is a newly manufactured piece of material. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. So then you yeah. slowly you slowly replace every single plank in your fully constructed ship with the new planks, and then you have all the materials of the old planks, right, just in a pile. So you take yeah. all of your old materials and you build a ship out of that. Is that because it is the same old materials and it is these physically the same planks? Is that the original ship that you just rebuilt or is that just a replica of the original ship i think, I think that's called point. The, i think that's called the ship paradox yeah it is I, was, I looked that up the other night actually i mean at one point i think they diverge right like at mm-hmm. one point neither can be whatever the original when is that halfway i, mean, that, <laughs> I think immediately once the changes so even if you think about a point in time the one that was before never will be again, right? And what does that mean? So, you know, like the body regenerates all its cells over time and eventually you completely regenerate all your cells. So none of the cells that existed before aren't That's even fair. there in the first place, right? Yeah, it's so like seven years. It's not even that long. And so where's the consistency, right? Is it a soul? Is it the mind? Is it like some chemicals that still remain? Where is that memory, right? I think that's the most interesting thing about existence itself is that what we call these things is memory being passed down and memories changes over time so it can never be the same because it's always evolving like even like the whole thing i put my hand in this part of the river uh that water that i touched i will never be able to touch that same water even though i'm in the same gps coordinate or whatever like it it just doesn't work the same because that moment in time is gone um yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. I, do I don't feel know. Like... I'm, I'm, I'm getting meta here. I'm. I'm I know, no, dude. This is it's awesome. Lost. I'm lost. It's hard because no, I'm with you in the sense that like I also think it's different for an inanimate object like a ship versus a human. Because if you were to talk about just the ship, I would argue yes, you have now just rebuilt the original ship, right? Um, because all of the parts are the same. But now, whenever you bring like a human into that equation it's like well no what makes you you is like all of your characteristics all of your little quirks that you're gonna have so going back to the face transplant thing i was talking about if you were to put josh's face on someone else obviously that's not josh right because they're not going to be a a dickhead like josh is right (laughs) and that's the final point mean so got him i don't know I, i think that's that's my thought process is like you can't i don't know you can't replicate you no matter what so in my perspective it's like i wouldn't want someone else to live in my body so i would rather just be me and die in six Uh, months so that's where you brought it full circle and that's where i disagree with that because i think uh uh, josh was talking about like how that character was able to bring the other character closure within that Mm -hmm. universe Mm -hmm. um and it's almost like I, I was equating all of this, like we we're talking about hypotheticals, a video game, all these uh, objects. And I think even like if you think about like your whole ancestry, right, like every person uh, 
um, ends in whatever idea of this person is like, I will die if I have kids, like, but something gets passed on from a biological sense. And also of like ideas, if I have the opportunity to raise them, if I have an idea, and then they can kind of allow me to die with, um, with elegance in a way that like Josh was explaining. And so, uh, you know, I like, would I let this other guy like take over the body or not? I mean, I think it's like, it's more about a being peace at like, with whatever end you want to have. So yeah. there's no real wrong or wrong, right choice there from my perspective. It's a really, um, I mean, it's, it's a really really like captivating game because like you, you're making these decisions like the whole game like um one one thing that happens like pretty early is uh like the consciousness that's like the cancer almost like taking over your mind like that tumor is um he was a smoker when he was alive and so he's like having those cravings but you don't smoke and right. so like mm -hmm. you make the decision whether you're gonna like smoke in your body or not to like appease this other like Oh, entire snap. like personality you have so and it just like i mean there's so many decisions like that in the whole game but i mean um, it, and for me and 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 i went through this whole i became friends with him like i went through the whole progression i i i i did smoke i i did i met with his old girlfriend I went through his old memories. I, We're still talking about a video game, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking, it's a great game. Yeah, Cyberpunk is, is a great game. It is Keanu. Keanu, man. Oh, yeah. Matrix yeah. 4. Okay, baby. I remember. Matrix 4. I remember seeing the trailer for this, I think. He, he killed it this whole game. I'm not going to lie. And, and like, I had to ask Savannah about it just to make sure that, like, that I'm not being weird. Like, is this wrong? Because she watched Wait, me play is, the whole game. Is what <laughs> wrong? Is what wrong? What are you asking? <laughs> me making this decision. Isn't uh, that bad? I see. Of, I of see. being the friends with the consciousness? The no, of making this decision, this mortal decision. To die or not die. Uh, right. Oh. That's what he's talking about. I mean, you know, it, it depends on how serious you take stuff, right? Like, a lot of the people, like, it's just like people will laugh like it's just a just another damn game like why are you wasting time no but dude if you're, I if mean, you're like, really thinking about it if you're really thinking about it i can see how you can get to that point because you're you're investing some hours and 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 in emotions like you know exactly I, I get hype when i when i play some video games like if you don't then you don't understand like there are artists besides engineers there are artists who designed this experience no right? it's a work of art and and if if you wanted to Watch a movie that's on Netflix right now. Uh, have you heard of the, the movie Mine? I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I've not. No. A solid movie. Um, Mega Mind. Shut the fuck up. Mega Mind. Mega Mind. Yeah, energy. I've heard of it. Big head energy. <laughs> a guy is in uh, Afghanistan, or not in Afghanistan, but like North Africa. And he's walking around, and his buddy hits a mine. And he blows up. Ooh. Like he lost his legs. So uh, he tries to give him morphine. He like gives him morphine twice. And he's like, dude, stop. I need to give you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the ending, but uh, this is like the first 20 minutes. Like, dude, uh, don't do this. I need you. I need you to focus up. I need to focus on yourself. So he like shoots himself in the brain. Like he kills himself like his friend does just so that he like won't try to use the rest of his medication. Um, it's crazy. And it turns yeah. out like the original guy is standing on a mine the whole time. So he like, he's, he's fighting to try and. He can't move or he'll explode. Exactly. Oh, he's awesome. standing on a mine. So it's like, it's like a whole, it's, it's a bottleneck episode, I guess. <laughs> That's a movie. I see. That's uh, stressful. But it's like, do you want to make the decision to move and and make take the chance, or do you want to like make the decision to stay where you are forever? Can you like, can you Indiana Jones your foot, like you know, put the dead guy <laughs> on on the oh, foot? Oh, there's an idea. And, like, yeah, that's what I would do. I don't know how mines work. This is crazy, man. I thought this and freaking pick cyberpunk. Pick up, hold that button, and take it with you. I thought this freaking cyberpunk conversation was going to last like all of, you know, eight to 10 minutes. And then we were going to talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about restaurants and how Damn. they, they seat people too close together in restaurants, but this took way, Another time. 
longer than I thought. And we got into like some freaking moral dilemmas. Like, uh, should we talk about the trolley problem real quick? Oh, yeah. can we? Should we? Yeah. Long let's just let's just do a, a round circle of what you would do. <laughs> that's a that that's one uh, critique of the game that does not tie in well. You have to kill like eight hundred people just to like make this decision of like who's gonna take the body. <laughs> <laughs> So, so okay just a, a, a real quick round circle right now um trolley problem you got mm. you know five five people unknown random people on a train track um a train is about to to kill them and you have the option to pull a lever and switch the train's tracks but if you switch the train's tracks it's going to kill one person instead um do you pull the lever or not who's my the person? answer is no who's the it's person so who's the person yeah do you know who's the person, the person? All, no they're all they're all random people my answer okay. is no and see so you're next i think either way you you make a choice to act or not to act and uh uh human lives have values and so uh, a certain level of value does one way more than the other it's hard to say gut reaction you kill the one you can't kill the five. Oh. okay okay josh what about you uh is there a way i can kill all six people <laughs> you, you drift the trolley so it like goes sideways yes. I should have asked. I should have i've asked. seen that in a meme okay uh just uh to be head ass um i would kill five people because uh i would stop global warming sooner because humans are a plague for the earth good guy okay okay dan actually dan dan i i don't know some are you are you there. are you doing nothing and killing the five or are you pulling the lever my, and killing the one? My heart says it's not up to you to decide what happens. I love it. You have to Let's let you have to let the universe bro. play out. Listen, okay, so you you're doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you have to let the universe let you okay. flick the wrist. Listen, Dan would, Dan would just sit there and not decide, and five people would die. That's what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> he would just sit there like, <laughs> He's uh, like sitting there on his fingers, <laughs> like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the one guy would sense. starve to death because I yeah, think cause he would like forget about him. Alex, what are you doing? I actually played a game about this. It's it's called the trolley problem from uh, cyanide and happiness. Okay. I have to take the whole point of the game is like for you to take value in each person's life. It's so fucked up. The whole game is fucked up. Uh, but I kind of want to do that. I want to take the value of each person's life. Yeah. So, so say there's like, wait, wait, so what doctors. Do there's so all right. For example, oh. there's five doctors that can save someone's life, and there's future Hitler. One terrorist. No, 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 no. no. But yeah. you don't That's know. Easy, you don't know. easy yeah, choice. You don't know. You don't know. If you no, you don't know because no. you're right. If if you knew that the one person you were killing was Hitler easy answer too, way too oh, easy oh my god right? no so i'm saying I, literally just five if, random people versus one random person you know nothing about them if you're, you if no you're doing history with literally anyone. just the numbers game oh god just the numbers game yeah all right one over five but yeah, it's all in all game. terrible game well terrible. It, is, want to talk terrible it is because here's here's my point right my point is i want to justify to myself at the end of the day that you're a good person. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch the lever. If I wasn't there, the train would have still ran over those five people. I didn't do anything. Maybe that's a bad way to think about it. But, you know, it's a way for me to justify the loss of those five people, right? You know what I'll, I'm saying? I'll, I'll make it easier for you to justify because this is where this is the like if they were just like boxes, we'd just say somebody put the boxes there. But so here's the here's the thing. And this is like almost like you could say the God dilemma of why things happen. Right? Rodinger's trolley. How did those people show up there in it the first place? All. What choices? If these are people, they had freedom of choice at some point to lead their lives a certain way. Now, either they were caught by somebody kidnapped and placed there and they couldn't move or mm -hmm. by their choice, they ended up there. And unless you don't want a world with freedom of choice, that leads to an infinite amount of possibilities. And then there's one that actually happens into in reality. What I'm trying to say is like, it wasn't just you there. People made choices that led them to get there. And so forget about like, oh, did I pull it or not? These other people might've done choices to lead them to that scenario. Great. So are you saying, I got a last are call you saying, for that. Yeah. 
Go are ahead. you saying that potentially it's like a, a five person suicide pact that's going on and you're about to maybe potentially ruin that? You don't know. So you, don't you know. can't be like, you just got to make your own decision, live with it. So what if it's and, the five uh, yeah. of us and then on like the this. other side? I don't like this. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, Joe Biden. <laughs> He's going to be dead in like... Okay. Well, <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it out loud. Don't, don't, don't say it. Yeah. yeah if you can't okay. say it out loud, it'll come the, true. Who's, the, the, who's feds are gonna, the, the feds who's are going to come after us. Uh, you, Jerome. Me? It's, uh, so it's, yeah. So it's the, yeah. Four, the four of you guys versus Joe Biden. Oh, hold yeah. up. Hold what? Up. What There's five about? of us. There's five yeah. of us. Well, if I'm only the leader, Jerome. obviously, we're, I'm, we're, if I'm not on the track, You're are the five. You can reach the lever. <laughs> oh okay then obviously i'm saying my no no here's here's the situation the four of you are on a track joe biden are, is on the other side obviously i'm killing joe biden i'm sorry Whoa. you guys are my friends you guys Hell are my yeah. friends i'm saving wow. my friends that's why you can't when you do the trolley problem that's why you can't introduce like friends relationships family you anything you gotta do just yeah. random people you gotta do random yeah. people this was fun I, yeah, as Dan true. says, it, it was madness, but that's it was what madness. this is about. It was madness. It was beautiful madness, should, uh, and I love it. Last call, baby? We should, yeah, we should go on the last, last call. Last call, baby. Let's go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll start with, uh, I don't know. We'll start with Josh. Your top top left corner for me. I don't know. Uh, don't murder people. Play Cyberpunk. It's a great game. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Dan, what's your last call? Uh. Don't sleep on the Indians. They're good at b-ball. Don't hey. say that. We already talked about that. Good at b-ball. Go right, Alex. break your ankles. What's your last <laughs> Me? call? Need some quick last uh, calls today. Go outside. Like it. It's warm. That's true. It is warm. It's That's dark. <laughs> Not something. right now. <laughs> last call. It is in yeah. Kingsport. I, I got a. I got a movie. So with all of this of moral conundrums and like life and events there's a great movie that came out like 20 yeah 20 years ago in english it's translated loves a bitch but um in spanish it's called amores perros great movie based out in mexico city it's tearjerker like you're it's so emotional but it's a great one don't watch it you know when you're drinking or you know just just watch it get into it be with somebody else or be alone whatever great movie watch it why can't i watch it when i'm drinking i don't know it'll it'll hit too much well drink (laughs) much don't don't get don't get yeah don't get absolutely to the point where i don't know i'm i I, whatever you you do you bro (laughs) self-medicate the way that you need to for this movie yes exactly thank you josh thank you i didn't want to i'm sorry i ruined your moment now i got now i will watch the movie because i feel bad about ruining (laughs) he's not gonna watch it he's not gonna watch it I'm um, already My last call love, love dogs. for this week. My last call for this week <laughs> is have these kinds of moral conundrum conversations with your friends. Because I think one, they're fun, but two, mm-hmm. you never know what kind of ideas are going on in other people's minds, 100%. where the conversation will go, what it'll need lead to next. And it just shows you like you can have different ideas about these types of things. And, you know, you can all still be friends. I think nope. uh, that's, that's important yes. in, uh, in the world today. So that's my in last this call. society that we live in. Yeah, man. I can, I can let Alex be a dumbass about taxes, and I can still be his friend. I can still, we can still talk about cyberpunk. <laughs> Listen, I miss you, Josh. Half, half, of us said you, to kill, half of us said to kill one person. The other half said to kill th- five people. And we're still all friends. It's the same with everything, man. You can have, you can be on opposite ends of the political spectrum and still be friends, as long as you can just talk about different things. Yeah, as long as we low stakes, honestly, we're not like actually killing people, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> low, low stakes. stakes, low stakes. But anyway, um, right. that was the uh, the nonsense brewery <clears throat> episode number twenty nine. I think. Yes. Um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video. Give us five stars on all podcast platforms. And uh, we we hope that you enjoyed what you were sipping on. Have a great rest Bye. of your day. Goodbye. We love you. Goodbye. Bye.